vinyl friends and vinyl community, it's Brian from Brian's Vinyl Records, and today I'm talking about my first ever record fair experience. So I see a lot of videos on the, on the, on the vinyl community talking about people going to and what they've gotten from record conventions, fairs, shows, whatever uh, they're called, and I've always wanted to go to one, but there's just not a whole lot of them in my area. There are some that are a little bit down south that... Um, or about an hour and a half away, but I don't know how those are or big they are. And there's one that I always thought, well, this would be the one to go to. That is the Fargo Record Fair. It's about a four hour drive for me, but I have a friend up there that I can go visit if I wanted to do it. So I planned on doing it last year, but of course with COVID, that was canceled and I wasn't able to do it. So this year I put it on the calendar. I saw them advertising for it. I got a hotel booked and I went up there for one night and went to the record convention the next day. So the Fargo Record Fair is a pretty good size. It just seems to grow every year. They switch spots, I guess, constantly and find a new, new place. This was held at a brewery in a big brew hall. They had beer served for people. They had all sorts of vendors, I think, they said somewhere in the 20 or 30 range for vendors, which is pretty good. And it was pretty cool. Well set up, well done. Uh, I was the first one there, so I got in first. I was able to make my way all the way around to the back and start where most people started in the front, because that's what you saw when you came in. I went all the way to the back so I could start with the people who were in the back and see if I can get first dibs on things that they may have had. So. All in all, it was a really fun experience for me, and I'm looking forward to going to more of these in the future. Um, if there are any that you know of in the Minnesota area that are, you know, within a four to six hour drive, let me know if there are any good ones in that area. I would love to do more of these in the future. So let me show you what I found at this record fair. So as I mentioned, I, I came in and there's tons of people in the front. So the, the way it worked is it looped around the whole brewery to the back. And I know in the back they were setting up vendors. So I was I was there early and saw them going in and out the doors and setting up in that, in that general area. So I knew where I was gonna start. So I got in and went all the way around and I started looking through some of the boxes back there. I found a couple things. I talked to one of the guys about a Megadeth record, trying to determine which version it was or which year pressing it was, and it turned out it's one I already had, so I moved on. But uh, I looked through the rest of his bins and I found some good stuff. So let's start here. The first thing I found was this Great White Twice Shy. Now, I already own a copy of this, and ironically, I picked it up in Fargo at one of the record stores out there. But the copy I had is a little bit noisy, not bad. Uh, and when music plays, you can't really tell, but it has a few minor scrapes on it and things like that. And so it was great. I was going to keep it, no big deal. But when I saw this, the price on it was only 10 bucks, and I couldn't pass it up. It came home with me. It sounds awesome. I played this. Just beautiful dynamics. It's just the same press that I had already, so it's kind of cool. Um, but now I have a cleaner copy for my collection itself. So super excited about that. Great album, awesome start, and awesome first find. I also found this album. This is Dio's Holy Diver album. I recently sold all my Dio solo albums uh, because most of them just aren't, weren't things that I would listen to on a regular basis. But this is the one I've always wanted and never have had. It has Holy Diver and Rainbow in the Dark on there. Um, and those are two songs that I love from Dio. So this is the one I always looked for. But like I said, I've never been able to find. And this was sitting in his bin, and I grabbed that one for sure. So already two great metal finds that I'm super excited about. And then I saw this. Bob Dylan's Modern Times. This is a fantastic Bob Dylan album from 2006. It was his first uh, album that says here, uh, first new album of new material in about five years, and worth the wait. I had purchased a copy of this from the, the Amazon warehouse over the last, I think last spring or so, and was super excited for it because it's just one that you don't see very often in stores. And when I got it home, it was cut off centered. Like it literally was cut in an oval shape almost. And so it warbled and it had an awful sound, it made it sound really bad. So I sent it back and obviously they don't have anything to replace it with. So I got my money back. But I found this. This was still sealed. 
and so I picked that up, paid a pretty uh, decent price for it, actually really good price for it to, based on what it goes for, and super excited to have this. This one is perfect, it's not warbled at all, and it sounds really good, so super pumped to have found that. I worked around the whole area, looked through a bunch of different things, didn't really find a whole lot there, came up on the first tables that were in as you came in. So this is what I found in one of the bins there. Uh, this was the guy who uh, set up the whole thing and was one of the organizers there. So he has a ton of really good stuff in his bins. A lot of it was stuff I wasn't really needing, so I didn't pick it up, but I did find this find in there. This is The Highwaymen, their first album. Johnny Cash, Waylon Jennings, uh, Willie Nelson, just a kind of a super group that they put together. Really good stuff. And uh, this was only five bucks and it's pretty much in like mint condition. Beautiful, beautiful copy. Super excited to add this to my collection as well. So the Highwaymen. I'm gonna skip one of them here because I want to talk about that last, but I went around uh, the corner and I visited two more before this last one. And this one was from a gentleman who had posted that he was coming all the way from Missoula, Montana. And really nice gentleman, uh, I believe his record store is called Ear Candy Music. So if you wanna look that up, a really good, really nice guy. And I found this in there. This is Grunt Truck's last album. So the story of this album is Grunt Truck was a grunge band in Seattle uh, in the 90s, got pretty famous, then had a lawsuit with their record company and lost most of their money and funding and really didn't have a lot to continue on. They had two of the members quit the band and they started touring still and trying to get money back to pay for the lawsuits. They recorded some uh, songs in the late 90s, I believe 97, 98, 99 range. And the original band got back together, made some more songs, they did another band. Uh, nothing ever happened with it. It had been sitting there forever. And I guess the one of the people representing them found the recordings after the lead singer had passed in 2002 and presented them to the record label that they use here called Found Record Recordings, Found Recordings. And they jumped at it, released it in 2017 finally. This is that 2017 release on silver vinyl. And so I saw that there and I thought, I, I, I'm gonna pick it up. It was not expensive. It was a good price. I decided to take it and bring it home. I listened to it and it sounds phenomenal. A really good album. Um, so yeah, Grunt Truck was just one of those Seattle bands that not a whole lot of people really know. They put out a RSD release this last year and it's a really good album. So I took a chance on this and I'm glad I did. It's fantastic. So thank you to Ear Candy Music in Missoula, Montana. On the way out, I stopped again at another place that had a cassette tape. I picked up one cassette tape, Guns N' Roses Usually Illusion 2, which I was missing from my Guns N' Roses cassette collection. Picked that up, but while I was there, I also saw this sitting there, and he had dropped the price on it to try and move it before the show was over. So I picked it up. This was a steal. Heavy metal soundtrack. This is the original pressing of the album. So it has uh, sides one and four on one disc and two and three on the other disc. Listen to it today, it's awesome. Just such a killer soundtrack. And I don't know why I've always had this missing from my collection, whether it be CDs, tapes, or vinyl. Never had a copy of it. So now I finally do. This is a great copy. It's a, you know, a little worn on the cover, but the vinyl is really nice, plays very well, and super pumped to finally have that in my collection. Okay, so now for the coup de gras of the whole event for me. This is my favorite find of the whole weekend. I'm super pumped about this. So a little backstory on the album. About four years ago, maybe five years ago, just as I was starting to get back into vinyl, my local record store had this sitting in their used bins. But the price was $40 at the time. And when I just started collecting, to me that seemed like too much to spend on one album. So I passed on it. I came back and it was still there and I almost picked it up, but I convinced myself that was just a little too much money for one album and I passed on it. By the next time I had come back, it had been sold. Fast forward, I still kick myself to this day for not paying that, but at the time, I just did, I had a lower threshold of what I was willing to spend on a vinyl record. That's creeped up over the years and gotten you know much bigger than $40, um, but 
at the time I just didn't want to spend that kind of money and I wished I had because the album goes for a lot more than that now. It was hard to find. So fast forward to 2021, about three weeks ago or so, they announced that there's going to be an unofficial pressing of that album. So I jumped on it. I picked up a copy of the unofficial pressing. I was happy as can be because the guitar player says they're working on getting represses of this era of the band's albums out, but he's been saying that for a couple years and it just hasn't happened. So I thought I'll get the unofficial pressing and if someday he puts out a new copy, I'll pick up the reissue because I want to have it. Then I'm sitting there and I get to this table and I start going through, you know, it's all alphabetical, so I start going through the A's, I get to the B's, and there's a copy of Eternal Idol. Well, I already have Eternal Idol. So I'm like, cool, I, you don't see a lot of Tony Martin era Black Sabbath in the bins. So, Eternal Idol. Then a typical Black Sabbath Paranoid comes up, another Black Sabbath Master of Reality comes up, the albums I already have, and then all of a sudden I see this one here. And I nearly crap myself. So I look at the price immediately because I know that these go for over $100 online all day, every day. And the price was only 50 bucks. I snatched it up right away. And this is my prize purchase from there. This is Black Sabbath's Headless Cross album from 1989. IRS Records, original pressing, Tony Martin on vocals. This is the second, I believe, album with Tony Martin that was released. I could be a little off there. It might be the third album. But like I said, this is one I've regretted not picking up for the last five years or so. And I'm super excited that I found it. And especially at the price. Funny thing, the night before the record show, I was flipping through some of the vinyl groups that I'm in. And one guy said, $40 ain't so bad, referring to the unofficial pressing, showing a copy of this album on Discogs selling for $110. So I was like, oh yeah, not bad at all. And to find this, it's in really, really good shape. The record's in great shape. The, the cover, you know, has its typical wear for an album of its age, but overall, no creases, uh, a little bit of corner bending and whatnot, but overall, a really good shape cover. 50 bucks was a steal. So I picked it up, I listened to it last night, it sounds so good. It's awesome. Um, it, it blows the bootleg out of the water, which is to be expected and hoped for. Uh, but yeah, super pumped to finally have this in my collection, an official original pressing of Black Sabbath Headless Cross, a really good Tony My uh, Martin era album from the boys. And yeah, that's the big one. So there you go. My experience was awesome. I really, really enjoyed the record fair. I had a blast. It was fun talking to people there. Everyone was in really good spirits. Everyone was having a good time. And um, yeah, just being able to sit there for a couple hours and dig through all the bins there. I passed on, of course, a Megadeth original master recording of, of the uh, Countdown to Extinction album. Rightly so. I mean, it was $250 and that's way over what I want to pay for anything. But it was really cool to see it there. It was really cool to see a copy of that. And the same guy had copies of the the, the old White Zombie albums that were pre uh, Los Exorcisto. He had a box set of all those albums that were pre Los Exorcisto as well. So it was cool to see those there. Now, those aren't great albums in my opinion. Uh, they sound awful. And uh, I wasn't going to pick one up, especially with the price he had. But this guy had a ton of really cool Metallica pressings, early Metallica pressings, um, just things you don't see very often. So it was real fun to flip through those as well. Um, I was really, really hoping to find some rare gems that are on my wish list, but I didn't see a whole lot of that. But really happy with the albums I did pick up. I think it was well worth the drive, well worth the hotel, and well worth the trip. I had a blast. It was fun. Uh, if you've never done a record show or convention or fair, highly recommend it. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun. You can find some real good gems in there. You'll find some overpriced stuff, but you'll find some underpriced stuff as well. And I think I found excellent deals on everything that I brought home. So, what a great time! I am already looking forward to going up there again next year for the same convention, and already trying to find other conventions that might be close to me that I could make a day trip or or an overnight trip to go see so 
positive experience all the way for me. Had a blast, really enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until next time, keep spinning, Vinyl Friends.